Hi, my name is Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. This is episode 52, Preventing Trauma Response to COVID-19. The author of the book, The Body Keeps the Score, Dr. Vessel, Bessel van der Kolk, has just put out a brief video that talks about what we can do right now during COVID-19 to prevent or at least reduce the impact of trauma from being in quarantine during a pandemic. And I'm going to talk about the strategies that we can use to mitigate these. So he mentions that there are six preconditions for trauma. And there are things that we can do to mitigate those. Those six preconditions are one, unpredictability, two, immobility, three, loss of connection, four, numbing out or spacing out, what I call dissociation, five, loss of sense of time sequence, and six, loss of safety. So especially if all of these things are happening at the same time, the likelihood of you having a trauma response is very high. So I'm going to tackle these one at a time and tell you what I'm doing, which are mainly things that I've learned from my recovery, some of which was specifically about how to recover from trauma. So number one, unpredictability. When you're in unpredictable conditions, the best thing you can do is create some form of predictability, which means creating some kind of schedule for yourself. One of the ways in which I'm doing that is I am sticking as closely as possible to my schedule as it was before the quarantine. For example, on Sundays, I do all of my food planning, preparation, and shopping, and I'm still doing that now. I'm only doing the shopping every other Sunday so, uh, so as to keep out of the public as much as possible, but I still do all my food planning and prep on Sundays. Uh, I also work my part-time jobs during the same hours I did before the quarantine. I go to the same meetings I always did. They're just held on Zoom now. I stick to the same schedule with my sweetheart, with my sponsees, and my sponsor, so that everything is as close as possible as it was before the quarantine. The next one has to do with immobility, and the antidote to that is to move. So what I do is I do yoga three times a week, and I walk outside every day unless the weather is really awful. Before quarantine, I only walked about three days a week. But I've upped it because I think it's especially important when you're stuck in the same place all the time to go outside. Not only am I moving my body, but I'm also out in the sunshine. And I get to see nature and see that things are changing daily because it's spring. The birds and the flowers and the trees don't know there's a quarantine. And that's somehow quite refreshing to me. The next one has to do with loss of connection. As humans, we are wired for connection. We simply cannot be fully human without connection to others. So we must connect with other people. This is how we thrive. Though we may not be able to physically connect with people right now, we can still stay connected to them and share our joys and concerns, our milestones, our difficulties, whatever we're going through. And we can also connect this to the predictability I mentioned above by scheduling some of our connections to others. It doesn't mean you have to schedule something every night, but having something to look forward to is really nice. You can set up conversations on the phone or Zoom meetings with friends or family as a way to stay connected. You want to make sure that you're reaching out and texting people just to let them know that they're on your mind. Don't wait for people to contact you reach out to them. Maybe even eat meals with others from time to time, sing together, play games together, watch movies together, even if you're not physically in the same place. On to the next one, which has to do with numbing out or spacing out, which what I would call dissociation. This is especially bad for people who are addictive, compulsive, and or obsessive. And that's one of the reasons we developed our addiction, compulsion, or obsession was to numb out. 
So being present is the antidote to dissociation. And the way that I counteract that, what I've learned is to engage my senses. For the sense of sight, I might look out the window and try to find the farthest thing that I can and focus on it that I can still make out what it is. For my sense of hearing, I listen really carefully and try to figure out what is the farthest noise away that I can hear. When it comes to the sense of smell, I burn Nag Champa incense in my home. It's an incredibly soothing smell to me. I also burn scented candles all the time in my home. You could pick up a cinnamon stick or some other spice and smell that. When it comes to the sense of taste, I usually sip something like flavored seltzer or tea. If you're a coffee drinker, you could have your favorite coffee. Or if you chew gum or eat candy, you can slip something like that in your mouth to bring you into the present moment. When it comes to the sense of touch, there's all kinds of things you could do. You could take a hot shower or bath, touch another person, touch your pet. But if you're isolated and alone, maybe find something that's hard and then something that's soft or something that's warm and then something that's cold. I like to feel my feet solidly on the ground as a way to be present. When we talk about feeling grounded, we know that we're in the present moment. The next one has to do with a sense of the loss of time sequence. When we're traumatized, we might feel like time has stopped or that we lose days or don't feel like things are changing or moving forward. My sweetheart has a fantastic antidote to this one. He's a gardener and he loves to go out every single morning and walk the garden and see what little bud has perked out of the soil or has started to sprout of the branch or what thing has blossomed. So if you live in an area where you can do that kind of thing, go out and walk regularly and look at how things are changing. This is spring, so there's a lot of really exciting growth going on. And if that's not your thing, but you still want to instill in your mind that time is actually passing, there's a ton of ways that you can do that. Like if you meditate, you can pay attention to the thoughts coming through because you know that's going to happen since it's your mind's job to think. Or the other thing you probably notice when you try to meditate is different sensations come up in the body. What happens for me all the time is that I get an itch somewhere. These sensations show you that things are moving forward. You're not stuck in time. Going back to the idea of scheduling things and having some predictability, when you schedule something and then it happens and then you schedule another thing, it actually gives you the sense that time is moving forward. So that can help with the loss of sense of time as well. The next one has to do with the loss of a sense of safety. The way that you're gonna handle having a sense of safety is really gonna depend on whether you're alone or with others and what personally makes you feel safe. One of the ways I'm making myself feel safe is obeying the social distancing rules being put out by public health officials. I only go out for walks to the grocery store and to my sweetheart's place, and I wash my hands really regularly. When walking, I make sure to stay six feet away from anyone that, I'm, that might be walking by. When I go grocery shopping, I wear gloves and a mask, and I wash items that I bring home that have, may have been touched by others. Uh, some people might feel safe by listening to soothing music. The sense of touch is usually the most important element in making people feel safe. So if you're alone and don't have another person to touch you, you can still engage your sense of touch by caressing your arms. You can snuggle up in a warm blanket with a warm cup of tea. If you're blessed to be with another person, then you can touch and caress and hug and snuggle with each other. That being said, if you are with other people, a sense of safety also involves privacy. Now, this is not something I personally have to deal with. I'm privileged enough to live alone in a townhouse, so I have lots of space to myself. But if you have a really small space and you don't have the privilege of having multiple rooms to which you can escape, 
then you're going to have to actually communicate with the other person or people that you're with and come up with, guess what? A schedule. That seems to be the theme here. You can designate times that you get to each be, quote, alone, even if one of you is in the chair and the other one is in the couch in the same room, you can designate private time where you're not available to talk or ask questions of each other. If you're someone with a history of trauma, then you need to develop a sense of safety within your own body. Yoga, Tai Chi, Qi Gong are all really great ways to do that. So as you can see, there are quite a few things that are going to be extremely helpful in preventing or at least minimizing a trauma response from this quarantine. The things with the biggest payoff are creating a schedule of some kind and sticking to it, staying connected, and moving your body. These will all help with multiple preconditions of trauma. But as I mentioned above, there are other things you can do as well. So I hope that this is helpful to you and I wish you all the best. Be well, my friends. That's it for today. If you like what you've heard here, then you just might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, head on over to my website, which is higherpowercoachingandconsulting.com and click on the contact menu. I'd be happy to schedule a consultation with you to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be sure to get future episodes of my podcast. Thanks again.